Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha and welcome to Adventures in Small Business, a collaborative effort by the U.S. Small Business Administration Hawaii, District Office, the SBDC Small Business Development of Hawaii, VBOC, the Veterans Business Outreach Center of the Pacific, and the Patsy T. Mink Center for Business and Leadership, all great partners. Today, we have Valele Maleki here with us today. She is the CEO and owner of uh, Veheba Soap Company. So. Tell us about yourself, your background. <laughs> uh, my background, so I have a, a business degree. Um, I worked for a bunch of different corporations before I actually started my soap company. Mm -hmm. Worked for, um, in advertising, for the Honolulu Advertiser, and then I worked for Kamehameha Schools. Um, I just really wanted to start my own business. Um, wasn't sure at that time what exactly it was going to be in, um, but my partner and I, we both worked at Kamehameha Schools um, for the soap company, and we decided, hey, let's just start off a little soap company, do it as a partnership, and do it on the side. And so for a whole year, we just did it on the side, it's like a little hobby. Wow, because you have a really diverse background. so. How long ago did you start this company? Um, we started maybe, this is going on the fourth year, I think. Oh, mm -hmm. nice. But the first year was just like a hobby. And then the second year I said, okay, you know, I'm gonna commit myself to the business. And I left Kamehameha Schools. And so it's been three years full time. Wow, that was a big move. So so what really motivated you to, you know, leave the, that security of a job and kind of do your own business? Mm -hmm. Just the independence, I guess, that you get with your own business. Mm -hmm. It's not the money for sure in the <laughs> beginning <laughs> but <clears throat> I'm sure that'll come um, but it's definitely the independence and the flexibility that you get when you operate your own business and then um, yeah someone asked me I think it was my son that asked me um, what is it that I like about being my own boss mm -hmm. and I think it's um, you're able to push your own <clears throat> I don't know if agenda is the, is the right word it's a little bit strong but push your own agenda so you get to do all the things that you you thought was porno, you thought right. was right, so you get to do it in your own business. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great, and I know you have you know your family. Mm -hmm. Tell us about them and how you juggle everything for being an entrepreneur, you know, mom, mm -hmm. you know, and all the things that you do for the community. Mm -hmm. I have four kids, and I have two businesses, so the soap company, and I have a retail shop in Kapolei. It's it's hard to juggle it all. It's super hard. Um, yeah. <laughs> I know. I mean, I've known you for a while, mm -hmm. and the store is doing great. I mean, and you're so busy with your soap company and your family. So give us a, a uh, some advice on you know how you manage that. I think um, now I'm kind of at a point where <clears throat> I dedicate certain days to certain businesses. I mean, they all overlap because there's things that pop up for different things that I need to take a, take care of right away. But um, for the most part, certain days I'll say, okay, this is for the soap company and have to like fully dedicate myself to that and kind of ignore other things you know so kind of let that sit on the back burner for now um, if there's hard deadlines and there's just hard deadlines you can't do anything about them but it is a lot of work I, I would definitely work more than I did in a lot of my other jobs right. mm -hmm. so you know with that um, what is your vision of success you know working mm -hmm. for yourself mm -hmm. So I guess for the brand for success is if people are able to tell me, oh, I love your stuff, mm -hmm. it's great on my skin, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. Um, the feedback from the customer is that success for, from that perspective. Um, from the business perspective, I think um, when I get to hire people and you know you get to give them a job and they've never had a job or you get to see them grow into a position that you know they feel comfortable and they start to thrive in, um, that's kind of a success for me. And we, when we all thrive mm -hmm. as a business, you know you see the numbers start to grow too. That's success for me too. Right. I mean, small business is so important to our community. So can you tell us, you know, what makes your brand unique? You know, we, I see all the products here and, mm -hmm. and I love them, I've tried them. But tell us, you know, what makes it unique? Um, I think uh, there's a lot of soap companies out there. I'm not sure if there's a lot of um, native Hawaiian soap companies out there. So I think we come from a different, we have different lens when we see businesses. Uh, when we see our products, you know, like we really understand like um, 
why we use certain products and how um, our, our ancestors use them as well. Like coconut oil is such a big deal in skincare for local products. And you know, you understand, you read all the stories about it, how to use, how Hawaiians use it in different things. So that's, that's kind of a cool thing to bring to the table as far as being different. So did you see any uh, challenges, you know, getting um, all that information on your soap? I mean, I have some samples here and they smell really good. I'm still like, <laughs> eating them. Can you tell us, like, you know, what goes into this? And like you said, you, you use a lot of native products and it's, you know, based around a lot of culture. Do you put that on your products, the message? Or I try to. Um, we just, but the, it's hard to fit everything on your packaging. Uh -huh. So we just try to keep it, um, as far as the design wise, we try to use um, native fauna or um, the Pele, you know, it has some, um, they all have designs that are inspired by Hawaii. And so um, as far as making soap, we, we make it from scratch. And so it's kind of interesting, um, commercial soaps, they, all soaps are made this way. Uh -huh. uh, so it's kind of going back to basics. Um, and commercial soaps, when they began to commercialize soaps, they actually take out the great things in soap and they substitute it with um, synthetic material that can be irritating to your skin. And so we've just actually, handmade soap is just kind of going back to the basics. And what, what we're able to do now, um, uh, the way we, we're able to do now, we get to ch pick and choose really good um, skin care products to put in, into it. Mm -hmm. So like I use olive oil. A lot of soapers use coconut oil because mm -hmm. um, it's a lot cheaper, but I use primarily olive oil in my soaps. It's much more mild. It's nicer on your skin and moisturizing. Oh, great. So are, were there any challenges trying to get these ingredients and putting it together? Oh, yeah. It's hard. <laughs> There's not too much uh, local manufacturers. And so oh. we have to kind of scour to see mm -hmm. who's making what in, in Hawaii. And so getting honey from Manoa Honey, or we mm -hmm. get the um, Makai soap here. We use the loofah from um, Whole Farms and we kind of grind it up. So you have to be kind of creative and you have mm -hmm. to find um, certain farmers that do certain things that we can use. Mm -hmm. um, the here, this one is made with turmeric or alena mm -hmm. from locally. So you just have to be creative and trying to trying to find find local ingredients. Right. I know that's one of our challenges, you know, with small businesses, you know, um, getting the ingredients mm -hmm. right and trying to scale up in your business. It depends on the agriculture. Yes, so I know we work closely with the Department of Ag to make sure that all our farmers can uh, produce all the ingredients, like you said, the honey mm -hmm. and alena. So I noticed, noticed you also have lotions. Mm -hmm. Is that something new or? Um, yeah, the, so, the, so, the lotions came, on af came online after the soaps. Uh -huh. So we definitely wanted to add more products to our product line. So that came on after. Mm -hmm. And we use the cocoa butter. I just kind of hooked up with Manoa chocolates. And so we oh. get all our cocoa butter from them. Oh, great. So sounds like, you know, one of the ways you solved some of your issues is collaboration mm -hmm. and then really working together um, with the other businesses. So is there um, any advice you want to give to like how to solve these problems, especially with Made in Hawaii? Hawaii products? Um, I don't know. I've always kind of thought like business should kind of hooey up together, uh -huh. especially when we're um, making stuff. So I've always thought that we should um, kind of figure out what other businesses are out there that's doing something similar to you and try to collaborate to see if you can bring things in together, go into it as a hui and bring our costs down mm -hmm. and hopefully make more profit that way. And that's something that we've been kicking around for a long time at the store. How do we get the vendors together to kind of hooey up mm -hmm. and work together as a team as opposed to, yes, we're always going to be competitors, right. but let's, you know, let's figure out a way. And so supplies is definitely an issue. Everything shipped in. Mm -hmm. Can we like figure out a way to get all the shipment together, bring it all in one time, and then kind of disperse that to all the different small businesses. That, to me, would be an awesome thing if somebody yeah. could figure it out. <laughs> well, I know you're working on it. Yes. And, and what kind of resources um, have you found you know, to get you to that goal? Um, well, SBA has been super awesome. Every time I reach out to SBA, Patsy Mink Center, they've always been an, um, an open door for us. Mm -hmm. And so 
Um, I know there's some things going on in the community in y and I um, with in peace and they're, they're doing a lot of talking about um, supporting small businesses. And so I, I, I know there's a lot of um, wanting to create some economic development um, and supporting that in different um, in different communities. And I would definitely love to see that happen in my community as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think there's a lot of talk going on about it. So right, right. I know we're, um, we've been talking earlier and we're kind of seeing how do we get all the artisans and practitioners together, mm -hmm. right, even for some business education yes. so that uh, they can do a strategic plan and see work together, not only right. for the manufacturing ingredients, but for their livelihood, right? Yes. So, so yes, yeah, thank you for that. I know you've been instrumental in trying to get everybody together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about the Lotion. Um, can we try? Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. So what's um, what's the popular sellers? Um, the popular ones are <laughs> like pretty much the the picake and the plumeria. Coat. These are pretty much the popular ones for the lotions. And oh. I, I think because um, a lot of people are tourists are buying it to take back home, oh. and so they like the sense of Hawaii. And right. so that's what is kind of in their mind when they think about Hawaii coconut. The picake smell and plumeria. So yeah, that's that's my top three for the lotions. Oh, so you sell to the locals and the tourist market. Mm -hmm. And so, do you know, like, can you tell us like about that? What's the split? You think? Um, I want to say now it's like 60-40. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So 60% tourists? Yes, 60% oh, tourists. Mm -hmm. you know, and, you, and you didn't even tell us why you chose soap in the first place, did oh. you say? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we did. So uh, my partner and I, sh we both have children that have eczema. Oh. So my son, he, really bad all over. He doesn't have really bad eczema, but on his, his legs, uh -huh. he's allergic to grass, dirt. So when he's in sports, he just gets really bad um, skin issues on his leg and my friend her daughter has really bad eczema too mm -hmm. and so when we started to use that it doesn't heal it um, yeah. because you know it's, a, it's an environmental thing it's what right. you put in your body but it does kind of soothe soothe the symptoms mm -hmm. and so after that was it was kind of like you never use a commercial soap after that so wow. mm -hmm. well that's great I mean I always say that you know um, as women entrepreneurs and you know business owners we're always solving a problem, right? You know, and that that's what triggers us to to do more. So, yeah, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. So, with the eczema, um, is there any suggestions like on the lotions and the so specific ones or? Um. So that you have to read the label uh -huh. whenever you use certain products, and uh -huh. I would stay away from, if you see parabens or phthalates uh -huh. in whatever you're using, definitely stay away from it. Mm -hmm. And what we wanted to do was just use um, ingredients that you're familiar with, so you'll never, usually, you'll never see on natural soaps ingredients that you can't pronounce. Uh, okay. um, they're not made with synthetic products, and so you really want to stay away from a lot of those um, preservatives and synthetics. Oh, okay. So, you know, where do can I ask you, where do you see yourself maybe in the next five years and ten years? <laughs> I know, yeah, right? it's a hard one. <laughs> um, I've always, I've never wanted to be a big manufacturer of uh -huh. soap. I um, uh -huh. kind of wanted to keep it on a smaller scale, but uh -huh. we're starting to grow. And so uh -huh. I'm starting to kind of look at that model and understand um, that I really need to scale up in order mm -hmm. to um, keep up with my orders. Mm -hmm. um, starting to get into Japan and starting to get bigger, um, getting to bigger stores. And so um, really trying to understand that I need to become, uh, you know, I need to step into that role mm -hmm. and become a bigger uh, manufacturer of, of the, the product, so. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. So, and then tell us a little bit about the store. Okay. Yeah. Um, the store is uh, like, uh, we, we try to focus on made in Hawaii mm -hmm. um, products and artisans. So we have over 70 different local small businesses in our store. Um, the store is called No Ao, and it's, you know, some, it means someone that's very skilled. We're looking for people that are really skilled at what they do. They've been in the craft fairs, they've been around, people know them. So we're looking for that type of brand to come to our store. Um, it's really fun when people come into our store, they see all these different brands that they've loved over all these years, and new ones too. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of a, a neat concept that we get to work in. So where is the store located? At Kamakana Ali'i. And do you have any plans to expand <laughs> yeah. more stores? Yeah, we definitely are looking into seeing where we can um, find a place for us. Mm -hmm. 
Great. Okay, so we are going to take a short break, and when we come back, we want to find out more about how they can get into the store. Okay, great. Hey, Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff, but I really like energy stuff, so I'm going to keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stan the Energy Man at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour. We're going to talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. We're going to definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just kind of scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons, and then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up, and please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. <music> Aloha, welcome back. We're talking to Lele about her soap company. And during the break, I was um, admiring this one and smelling it. This is a rainbow? Yes, it is. Oh, so <laughs> how many flavors are in here? Oh, there's just one scent, but it's just we had to layer it with different, um, different colors. Oh, my favorite. <laughs> okay, I'm taking all these samples home. <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to um, get back and talk to you about the store, Noel Designers. You know, there's a lot of um, local artisans and practitioners out there who have wonderful products, like you were saying. How do they, how can they reach out and get in the store or, you know, uh, get to that level where you guys can display their things or help them? Well, definitely email us at Noyal Designers, uh, um, S at the end, so plural, Noyal Designers at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. Send us your top five different products, um, maybe links to your social media pages, mm -hmm. and just kind of give us a synopsis of what you do. Um, and we'll definitely get in touch with you. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Is there um, any types of products that do better than others in the store? Um, for sure, it's apparel, like local apparel, which oh, is okay. which is great. Like local sayings, you know, I, I think people can connect with that. Mm -hmm. So that and jewelry does really well in our store. So I know you said the store is in Kamakanali'i and Kapolei. Yes. So, um, is, do tourists go there, or is it mostly local shopping? In we do store? have a mix because the Hampton Hotel sits right on the property, and then there's one other hotel down the street, and then they're building another one um, nearby. Oh. So within like a three mile radius, there's like three different hotels, oh. and so we're getting a, a different mix now. So we're getting you see tourists from Canada, you see uh, from Canada, you see tourists from Japan come through. So yeah, definitely a, a mix of com customers. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So, uh, will we be seeing you in Waikiki soon? Yeah, <laughs> I would love to be go there. Okay, we gotta get we gotta get back to Hawaii together, right? Yes. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. So, do you see any um, future products um, for your line, your specific line? Anything new coming out? Yeah. So, in Japan, they definitely asked for a certain specific products. Um, we had lotions that we didn't have the matching soaps in Japan. They want the matching soaps. So if we had a coconut lotion, we didn't have the coconut soap there, so they want it all to match up. And so we're starting to work on the label um, to satisfy that, that demand. So is it going to be a special um, product just for Japan? Maybe. Or? We'll oh. see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll test it here too to see if people yeah. like it here. But. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I heard that Japan, they like, you know, special packaging for their omiyage, their gift set. Mm -hmm. So uh, how do you how do you figure out the packaging and everything for them? You mean, like, how do I we design the packaging for them? Mm -hmm. So now we, so I thought that mm -hmm. we would have to change it because mm -hmm. I know J Japan, they like it kind of muted, mm -hmm. the colors. Mm -hmm. um, but our, we have someone, our importer is testing it now, and he's telling me that it's selling itself. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm thinking we're going to be okay. He said it looks Hawaiian. Mm -hmm. It, you know, when they look at the packaging, it looks Hawaiian. They know that it's coming from a Hawaiian company, mm -hmm. and so I think people are responding well to the products. Oh, that's great. You know, um, 
So in retail, we always know that whatever Hawaii loves, Japan loves more. Oh. <laughs> so, you know, how did you get into the Japan market? Did you have help or any resources? Yeah, so I, I attended the Tokyo International Gift Show with SBDC. Mm -hmm. um, I got to a go there last year. Mm -hmm. And so there we were able to network with a lot of different Hawaii businesses and you're able to find out who you should talk to if you need an importer. Um, SPDC also has a lot of resources too. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was able to find someone that took my product, got it tested, or able to put the right packaging label on it for Japan Customs. Mm -hmm. And then now he's he's starting to um, go through the market. Oh, that's great. I know the, the program you're talking about, um, all of the partners participate. It's the high step. Yes. And then we, yeah, we go to the Tokyo International Gift Show. Correct. And then we have a Hawaii pavilion where we feature all local vendors. Right. So, so that's amazing. We've been there um, for several years, and you know it's great to see local companies thrive in Japan. So mm. I'm, I'm I'm so proud that you're in there. That's great. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. That's Thanks awesome. for everyone to help. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't have gotten there if they weren't supporting us along the way. So mm -hmm. yeah, to all the your partners, mm -hmm. Patsy Ming Center, SPDC, mm -hmm. High Step. Yeah, totally total. Um, support along the way yeah they're all they're all great partners mm -hmm. so you know that's one message we can give is uh, you know for entrepreneurs is get those resources I mean they're very low cost or free yes. a lot of resources yeah right great so what do you want to leave your uh, our audience with today about your company what do you um, think if they haven't tried it maybe you know they yeah, haven't tried like starting and starting their own business or just I mean if you really have a strong desire you have to be ready for it mm -hmm. to be an entrepreneur not everybody can be an entrepreneur mm -hmm. but if you really want to do it I, I just say find you know learn as much as you can mm -hmm. connect with as much people as you can there's a lot of resources like we've been saying that can help you along the way mm -hmm. and just go for it yeah and what are, what are some lessons that you've learned that you can share oh gosh so many <laughs> Learn QuickBooks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. yeah, learn QuickBooks um, and never stop learning. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's definitely for me. Like, I've been to all the, the fairs at Leeward. I don't know who puts them on, SBA yeah. probably, yeah. but I just constantly trying to learn. I mean, I have a degree, but I still work with people to understand more about how to run businesses. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just keep learning. Yeah, I know a lot of people with um, business degrees and even masters, and you know, they say without that hands-on experience, uh, it's totally different. It's right? true, you know. Yeah. It's so true. I go back and I read my books, my accounting books, and now I'm like, oh, now I get it, because you're actually doing it. Right, mm -hmm. right. Well, that's great. So. Another thing I wanted to ask you is, how did you um, actually build your brand? Can you kind of tell us like how it came about? Mm, so we actually hired someone to oh, okay. hire a professional, mm -hmm. um, Ceci Leong Designs, to help us develop our brand. She's this brand specialist, mm -hmm. so we kind of sat with her for a long time and kind of told her what we're looking for, and then she came up with a, a bunch of different concepts. And so this is what we um, kind of settled on together. So it was kind of a neat process, mm -hmm. but. If you're unsure, like you're not a professional at everything. I think mm -hmm. that's the thing that I've learned too. A big lesson for me is that you're not a professional at everything. So find the people that are, and right. you know, kind of trust them, and let mm -hmm. and know that they mean um, they will do well for your company. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is great. Yeah, because you know, a lot of people say, "Well, I don't know anything about you know how to bottle or get these things. You know, where do I start?" So, mm -hmm. so that's a, so that's a great resource too. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So find the resources, the right resources. So what else do you want to tell us about um, anything about your business, uh, you know, how it developed and any of the challenges you had along the way? Mm. It's definitely finding labor too, yeah. finding the right people to work with. That's mm -hmm. been difficult. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of the times it's our family, my husband, my kids are helping mm -hmm. to stamp the soap. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and interesting enough, like they, the boys, my sons, they don't want to work in a soap company. They'll yeah. do, they'll work in the store, but not at yeah. the soap company. So finding the right people, I think, getting the right people on the bus is, mm -hmm. is super important. 
And I know you guys do a lot of fun events, so you know you, ne you never make it a boring thing. And, oh, yeah. You mean so, at the store? You're talking yeah. about? Oh, yeah. We have monthly um, cultural events. We do a lot of hala, coconut, or neo papali neo weaving, haku making. Yeah, we try to definitely keep it fun there. Mm -hmm. um, and the artisans too. Sometimes they'll come out and participate too. They're volunteer or they'll work for us. So yeah, just a lot of different things going on to keep it fresh and fun mm -hmm. and so where do you, how do we know what's happening at the at your store with all the artisans is oh. there a schedule or yeah follow so follow us on social media mm -hmm. for sure um, we're no, no Yao designers at, oh, at no Yao designers for Instagram mm -hmm. it's definitely one of the best ways that we communicate with our customers and so what were some of the popular ones? I heard you say weaving and... Um, the most popular ones is the coconut, the coconut hat weaving, the papale new. Really? I know, surprisingly, that every time we do it, it has sold out. Oh. So, yeah. And so who participates in it? Um, we have um, different customers uh -huh. that sign up. We, we always sell out, but we have like a master weaver from um, Wainai or Makaha. I can't remember which one they're from. It's a uh -huh. husband and wife, and then they come out and they teach the class. But every time it sells out. So it's kind of fun, yeah. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what other classes do you folks offer? Um, let's see. Oh, we had Namaka Kahiko. You know uh -huh. him. He yeah. does the the hair picks. Right. He's done that. Oh, and then his kids did a slime workshop. So that was fun. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he does the ohe, ohe kapala, right? Ohe kapala. Yeah. Yes. So he. So how does he do that? I mean, because that's really difficult to finish in a workshop. I um. Well, I think it's on a smaller scale. Uh -huh. So I think they take it home and they finish it. So he starts them off and then they take it oh. home and they finish it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I tried one of those oh. forever. I, I think you had to finish mine. <laughs> yeah, but it's beautiful. It comes out beautiful. I know, and yeah. it's really sturdy too. Yeah, yeah. I was surprised at how, because we have such long hair, so it's right. nice, yeah, to find yeah. something that sticks in your hair. Right. And I know you said you had what over seventy companies. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. So can you just give us a, a name for a few? You know, every every time I talk to you know entrepreneurs who are helping, I just like to you know, uh, give a shout out to the to the others that you're helping. Mm -hmm. So, um, let's see, newer ones, we have Twine and Lux, she does like vegan leather bags, oh. so that's kind of neat. Um, we have Strong Arm Hawaiians, Little Strong is his, his products, but everyone loves it. So he does hoodies and he tells, you know, a lot of um, Olelo on his hoodies, oh. so those are really cool. So that's cool. So. You know, if I want to know more and, and everybody else wants to know more, we got to go down to your store. So again, let, tell us where we can find you. We're at Kamakana Ali um, in Kapole next to Coffee Bean and Tea by Center Court. Noel Designers. Noel Designers. Thank you so much, Lele, for Thank joining you. us today. We love to learn about your company and the store. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.